hello everyone. <laughs> my name is Nelly Dorfling. Today I would love to share with you my testimony. Um, it's, it's, it's something that really changed my life completely. And um, it's about how the devil came to kill, steal and destroy in my life. And if I didn't get the right help, yes, I probably wouldn't have been here today. So it was about, about three years ago plus minus, where um, everything in our life were normal. We had the, the perfect life, the way the world would say. Um, everything was going well, no issues, normal stuff here and there, that what the world would call normal, but um, had no major complaints or worries in life. And um, this one evening, I remember my husband and I, we went to bed, like usual, and then... Just after 12 that morning, I got woken up by the devil, which I know now, um, with horrible things happening in my body. My, to explain to you shortly, is um, right from my neck upwards, uh, downwards, I had lameness, deadness, no feeling. My neck was so stiff and sore, like excruciating pain running down my neck, right down the back. My legs were completely numb. Didn't feel them at all. Um, hard palpitations, sweaty hands, sweaty feet, and pins and needles. So the first thing I thought is um, something is really wrong. And I literally did think I was going to die. And the only thing I could do is just to wake my husband up next to me. And the only words I could tell him is, you need to pray for me. Something's wrong. And I rolled myself out of the bed, got onto my knees... And I could reach my phone, and I phoned a friend who was with us in the church we went to at that time. And um, I remember she was still awake. She answered almost immediately because she just had a baby girl a few months earlier. So she was on milk duty. But she was awake. And the only thing I also just said to her is, pray for me. I feel like I'm going to die. Pray for me. And um, yeah, I remember she started praying for me in the spirit. The only thing she knew what to do, she prays in the spirit, and that lasted about 30 minutes. And um, I didn't feel better, but I must say, when I also started to speak in the spirit, and I was shouting, and my husband was just bringing me water to drink and to throw on me the whole time, and um, eventually I, I could get up after that. Um, phone call was put down. Didn't really feel better, but the only thing that was better was... I could stand on my legs again. So I got back into bed thinking if I wake up later, it will just be normal. Everything will be okay. It was just a bad dream. <laughs> and um, later that morning when I woke up again, it was actually worse. Um, and everything from there on started to change. Um, <clears throat> make a long story short, my husband had to go drop me off at my parents' house every morning before he goes to work because I didn't want to be alone at home. I was in constant fear, um, literally thinking I'm going to die. Something very bad is, is happening with me. And, yeah, went to the doctor in that week, a local doctor, and um, explained everything to him. I cried because I didn't know what's wrong. My husband was with me. And the only thing the doctor could say to me while smiling is that, ah, you just have depression. And the best he could do for me is to give me depression pills and anxiety pills. And then still tell me that if I take it, I must just know that for a week, a whole week, it will be worse. I will feel like dying, but I must just stick it through. After a week, I'll feel better. And I remember looking at my husband and just thinking, there's no way. There's no way. I'm too young. There's no way I'm going to take depression pills and be on pills for the rest of my life. And the other thing what I couldn't get is how he can say that, but I still experience the excruciating pain in my neck. And I still have sweaty hands and sweaty feet. And no one could explain to me what's going on. Okay, so I went to the doctor for a second time, the, the week after that. And um, they couldn't, still couldn't find anything wrong with me. They sent me for all kinds of tests, for x-rays, scans. They couldn't find anything wrong in the neck. Um, no inflammation, no swelling, no, no vertebrae out of place, no 
broken bones, nothing. So they had no um, reason for me to experience the pain I've been experiencing in my body. And again, he asked me if I started with the medication, and I said no. And he said, you better start with that um, medication. That will make you feel worse for a week, and then after that, you'll be fine. What I did uh, do, though, is I took the, the tablet he gave to me for pain, because I had so much pain. I was drinking that, and then I took the, the pills for the anxiety. <laughs> but I told my husband... It was bad because I didn't know where I was. I was on such a high for two days that I didn't want to get up out of the bed. I could hardly speak to him, and then I, I just stopped that immediately. Um, but you had got to a point where my one friend had to come stay with us. She slept there three nights because she had to help give the dogs food, make food for me and my husband and her to eat, um, you know, just help with the general cares, do the washing because I didn't feel like doing anything. I just wanted to sit on the couch or lie on the couch, lie in bed, and fear. I just wanted to be there. No one should speak to me. I just want to go over this and over this and over this in my mind, and I just start fearing more and more and more and more. And also what started to happen is I started to throw up a lot. Um, could keep no food down, not even water. The moment I get, got something in, it came out and um, started to lose a lot of weight. My husband got really worried, and then the one morning, just after one o'clock, my friend actually told him he should take me to the emergency room at the hospital because she, she thinks I'm going to die. And um, yeah, she's been there, she had to clean up my puke and everything, and she, they just had enough. So they rushed me to the hospital in Newton Egg, and when I got there, they told us we had to pay a thousand rand just for a doctor to see me, to see if there is something wrong, and to put a drip in my body. So we had to give a thousand rand, and then we're told fifteen thousand rand more just for me to be on a bed to actually get the drip. And when we said we do not have the money, no medical aid, um, the doctor was feeling in a good mood that day, so he said, "Okay, it's fine, thousand rand." Then I stay in the emergency room on the bed, and they put the drip on me. So I was about there for five to six hours until the drip went completely through my body. We still have a photo that my friend took to send to the pr our previous church building to let them know I'm in hospital so I should be fine now. <laughs> and um, that wasn't the case. I was lying on that bed. I was in constant pain. Uh, they even gave me stuff for nausea. That didn't work at all. I just had the headache just got worse. Everything just got worse, and um, still when I got home, didn't feel better. They came and prayed for me. Some guy came and prayed for me, also my, my, my husband's boss, um, asking God to please have mercy on me and to please heal me. Didn't work, nothing worked, and oh, and what I wanted to mention is in this period of two weeks, um, every Sunday we still went to church because I didn't want to miss that. And when I got to church, yes, people prayed for me. Numerous people in the church building prayed for me. Laid hands on me, asked God to heal me. Did some stuff they were taught from some healing evangelist, but uh, nothing worked. Nothing. And then I was told, after nothing worked and doctors can't find anything, then I was told by someone in church that I need to listen to a couple of teachings online that will help me with forgiveness and to let go of my past. And so I did all of that. I looked up a few friends from my past on Facebook. I messaged them, inboxed, and I actually basically apologized for whenever I hurt them in life and I forgave them and I asked them for forgiveness. Some replied, some still today hasn't replied. And um, none of that worked. Some, some woman actually phoned me and told me that God gave her a vision when she prayed for me the, the day before and says that the only thing she got is that, you know, the devil is eating me up from inside. I need to forgive. Again, I did that. I tried everything. Still didn't feel better. Still had the pain. Still had the fear. Still was throwing up, losing weight, not eating anything. And then I remember this one morning, this was now in the... The second week, still, all of this happened. And um, I remember my husband on his way to drop me at my mom's house again. 
I took my phone and I, uh, a man's name came to my mind and I remembered this person. Um, his name is Arthur Schmidt from Port Elizabeth. And I remembered we had him come pray for my dad a few months or the year before. And um, via Curry Blake, that healing minister I told you about earlier, um, we went to one of his seminars in Cape Town and that's how we got the number for the person in, in the Eastern Cape representing them that time. And um, he came to pray for my dad and my dad got better. Medically, how doctors can't explain how he can use his knee, he could use his knee again. And he's up until today, he, don't have, he doesn't have pain in his body. So, called this guy, this man, and immediately he, he said to me, you will come through to pray for me. And um, my husband dropped me off at my friend's house that day, just in order so that I'm not alone with him in the house. And she was there, and he prayed for five hours roughly. But the only thing I can tell you today is that since the first time he's laid hands on me, I could feel something in my body changing. I could feel pain in my neck leaving. I had a warm feeling all over. Um, the pins and needles were gone. The sweatiness went from my hands and my feet. And it was just like a clarity of thought that I, like I, I, I had this expectation that it's going to be okay. Something is changing. The word of God must be true because when he's laying hands on me, I'm starting to feel better. And I just had this hope. Um, look, we didn't have it anywhere else. No one else, it, it happened when no one else prayed for me. So for the first time I felt something is, something is going to go well. And um, long story short, we, we went home eventually that day. I still experienced some things in my body, but it was way better than before. And like I said, for the first time I had a hope. And that evening again, I could not eat. Um, everything I wanted to take in just came out. And my husband asked me, don't I want to phone him again? So we did. <laughs> we did. We phoned him. We first prayed over the phone. And then he offered to come through to our house that evening. So he came through. And um, we didn't really know anything about praying. So my husband was there with him while he prayed for me. Um, but I was just basically there on the couch, lying there, um, body feeling numb, <laughs> again thinking, I had a hope, but again thinking, I'm going to die, because I can't eat, and um, I remember them praying for me, and then giving me something to eat, praying for me, giving me something to eat, and I could keep more and more and more in, and uh, that went on until about the next morning, about three o'clock, um, and when, when he left that day, I remember I could for the first time actually go to sleep, not worrying that I won't wake up the next, later the day. So I actually had a good morning's rest until I had to get up again. My husband had to go to work, so he dropped me off at my mom's house. And that's where this whole pause began of um, them coming to pray for me a lot. Because this was roughly about four months. Um, yes, I was feeling better. I was feeling better every time they came to pray for me. Better and better and better. And then when the devil wanted to attack me with something else, they came, they prayed again, and that stopped. Um, just for some reason, it was just the one thing after the other. But always feeling better. Symptoms always leaving. And then, in that period of them also coming to pray for us, um, for me, a lot of things happened. Uh, the one time the devil even came, I'm going to say the devil came because God doesn't bring sickness. The one in the morning I also woke up just after three, feeling my stomach wants to go. So I go to the loo and once it started going, I just felt, I started seeing black spots. So I thought I was going to pass out or I knew it actually. And I remember calling my husband three times and then the only thing I remember after that is lying on the bathroom floor, totally wet. And my husband is holding me and he looks like he's cried. And he was just so glad that I came back. Because he said that for a good few minutes, it was like I was dead in his arms. Um, he, there was no life at all. He just saw me falling. I hit my head against the bathroom tap so hard um, that my eyes rolled back. And you know, lots of stuff happened. The only thing he knew what to do is to pray the way he knew. It's just to say you will live and not die and trying to wake me up the whole time. 
So, when I, when I heard that, I was scared again. So, immediately on the phone, we phoned also again. And I mean, this was morning hours. But just like always, he answers the phone, prays immediately. And I felt better. Um, I took it easy the, easy the rest of the day. And then there was also another incident in that time where we went to Bloemfontein for a weekend um, to Angus Buckins. This is time. And that first night in the hotel room, I'll never forget it. I just started having a headache, not feeling well, and I just started throwing up. But this wasn't just throwing up. This was like you opened up a tap with your mouth and it's just, yeah. So that happened. Again, I had to pray. I phoned them. They prayed for me over the phone. Got better. The next morning, it's like nothing ever happened. I was completely better. And so then, when we got back, the one, he, he, he phoned every day and started to share the gospel with me and prayed for me some more and um, to teach me how to stay free. And then I will never forget the one day, the one evening, we asked him to come through again and he said to me, he's going to bring his wife with and they're going to come, come see us. And then Charlene, his wife, came with. And that's the night that they started sharing the gospel with us, you know, and why, uh, why you have to be water baptized in order to serve Jesus and to be free and to go, come out of Adam into Jesus. So that's when they started explaining that to us, my, both my husband and I. And we were so intrigued because, you know, for the first time we're hearing things out of the Word of God, which we've never actually heard in church. Yes, I've been water baptized twice before, but it was never because I knew the truth about the Word of God and never have someone prayed for me and I actually felt better. So, yeah, I started to get very excited. Both my husband and I, we were very intrigued and we just wanted to know more and more and more. And always there was these accompanying signs that went with these people whenever they, they shared and whenever they prayed. And um, they showed us so many things out of the Word of God, which no pastor has ever told us. And um, that's when I decided to get water baptized. And I see it as my only water baptism because the other two were in vain. So I got water baptized the one Sunday morning at their house in their baptism tank. And you must know that at this time, I am feeling way better than ever. The only thing I did still experience at times was a pain in my lower back, um, which was getting better and better and better. So the day I got water baptized is a day that I will never forget. I will always remember exactly what happened on this day. It was a Sunday morning. It was a sunny day. And we came to their house. And I remember when I got into the baptism tank just before... He was about to baptize me. I remember him asking me, um, do I want to ask God anything? And I just said to God that I would love to have a sign. And I would want it to rain. When I come up out of the water, it must rain. And then we went through the whole, bap you know, they were um, confessing my f faults and, yeah, the whole baptism. And uh, he dunked me, submerged me right underwater. And then when I got up out of that water, I'll, I'll never forget, it actually started to rain. Right there where we were, by the baptism tank, it started dripping. It was raining. <laughs> and I remember all of us were like, see, it was a sign. It was, it was awesome. Yo, I can't explain the, the joy that I felt that day. And um, came into the house, everything was over. And when I went to put dry clothes on, I immediately realized that I've got no pain in my body. Absolutely none. Everything was gone. So I came out and I was so excited to tell them that, you know, even to top the baptism, I've got no pain in my body. None at all. And we were all just very excited. We were so happy because, I mean, that is what they expect. The word of God is true. When they lay hands, I must recover because Jesus paid. And, um, yeah, so that is... That is my testimony, and just I hope that you guys will really get from this that there's only hope in Jesus. And um, today we're doing the same for other people, because there's no way that I can today walk past people and not help them, because Jesus helped me. 
And I thank God for these people that came into our lives because honestly, if we didn't get to meet Arthur and Charlene, there was no one else. No one else doing the truth. No one else living according to this book, um, the Word of God, and where signs and wonders follow them and where actually they live their life for Jesus Christ. No compromise. This is what they live for. And um, yeah, I'm so I'm truly grateful because today we know the truth and we can help others. So there's also a scripture I would love to read to you guys. The scripture what I held, hold very dear to me, what helped me in this time as well. Because I had it written out all over the house later on the kettle. There were scriptures, but this was the main one. It's 1 Peter 2 verse 24. And it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. So you see, by the, by the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed already. And the only thing that needs to happen if, if you don't believe is to that the believers lay hands on you and you will recover. And I'm a living testimony of that today. And I'm telling you that if we never met these people, yes, I, I probably wouldn't have been here today to give this testimony, to bring God all the glory. And to tell you out there that if you are facing sickness, a lie of the devil, or... Um, you just need answers, you want to know the truth, then you need to contact contact us, because, because Jesus can help. And He truly is my hope. Um, I have a hope today that I didn't have. Jesus Christ. And if we do not have Jesus, we will not make it. If we don't get water baptized, don't get filled with the Holy Spirit, don't obey the words of God, don't live for Jesus and do exactly what he said in this book, then we will not make it. There's no way that we will see you in the kingdom of God one day if you do not make Jesus Christ your Lord and you don't serve and obey him. So start there. That's it. Jesus is Lord. <laughs>